a story called The Distracted Dinosaur. I met a strange man the other day. I was at a party, more, more like a rave, in a big warehouse kind of place. The sort of place where people come together to yell gas or YOLO without irony. A sort of chaotic pit for all sorts of people, providing me up neon paint. You know, the sort of little neon kitten whiskers on their hopeful faces, colourful clothes and scruffy hair, leading deep into a crowd, you know. It was dark, it was a lot of noise, I was struggling to deal with the overstimulation. And then I saw him. He was a penicillin in a petri dish. Stood in a bright green dinosaur onesie, a tied fabric too big for his chubby frame. The silent of a man was, he was just stood there, relaxed and malleable in the raging sea of what he was crashing upon the shore of his body. And he clutched a plastic cup of cola in his right faded green floor, remarkably not spilling any. He had some kind of hen party tiara on his head, which I don't think was his. He was someone I felt like talking to. I had to know more. So I tried to strike up a conversation, but in the noise half of it was lost. He struggled to keep focusing on anything, but in time we got a system worked out. He'd absorb or respond to the world for a bit, then I'd speak and he'd answer. And then he'd just go back to the bedroom. I noticed at this point he never drank in his cup. He was speaking only to me in very short bursts, and, you know, I could barely understand him in the noise, but weirdly he could hear me clearly through the little dinosaur cloth ears. So a few hours later, we'd spoken about life, love, everything in between, in a kind of broken dialogue. His answers were thoughtful, sobering, and I was following him around to hear more walking through this still partying crowd, uh, which he was passing through with no effort. And he went to leave and asked if I wanted to come outside and get some air. So it was 3 a.m. and we were at a railway station. It's grey, with those irritating fluorescent lights. He goes and stands on the tracks. There are no trains this time of night and I'm not following him over. I notice his green arm has scars from where we climbed the wire fence. It's bleeding, mixing a sort of vivid green and lifeless red together. We don't really seem to give a fuck, so I'm okay with it. He's still clutching his drink, emptier now, in his slightly bloody claw. And he's still preoccupied by the world half the time. He's sort of only half with me. So he sits down between the metal tracks, then lies down. I'm still sat at the station side. I think what he's doing is illegal, but he isn't worried by that. I look over. He's playing with a glow stick above his face like a baby on a playmat. I sit for a while in the quiet. There's a point where I'm focused on the middle distance, and I hear him sit up sharp, drop his drink onto the tracks, and some of it gets on his arm. I think it mixes with the wounds. He's hurt. And for the first time in the entire night, he's bothered by something. He stands up and walks over to me. Sits back down, one arm around me, one arm holding his glow stick up to the horizon. He looks me in the eyes, and for once it feels like I have his entire attention. And I remember them, they were, they were brown eyes, so you could see them through the, the netting on the dinosaur suit. And he holds me tight, and he says, The sun is coming up. This, and he points to the glow stick, this isn't beautiful anymore. He waves it around half heartedly. The sun's rays kind of drown out the smaller green light of the glow stick itself. And I think I see what he means. He turns his attention to the stick again. He kind of reassures it. Don't fret, he says. And he throws it far, far away. Right across the platform, it rolls away under a bench. And all this time he follows it with his eyes, with that same tight focus I had from him only once, a few minutes ago. And there was silence. He took a deep breath and cried quietly to himself until the sun had risen completely. Thank you.